We were talking earlier about subtext and, and you know, being able to convey stuff on the face without having to just rely on the dialogue. Um, Vlad, I was going to ask you about the eyes because it's a criticism uh, that, you know, you hear a lot is in this work in general, they feel like, oh, it's dead eyes or they're not, you know, they're not seeing in the eyes. And then, of course, live action actors will tell you that, you know, you get the soul through the eyes and stuff. So what's your approach to eyes? And it must be something that you've had to apply a lot of attention to. Yeah, I think we've made a massive improvement with the MetaHumans. Going back a few years, uh, shaders uh, for the eyes uh, in Unreal Engine have improved uh, tremendously, supporting things like uh, refraction, which until some point uh, weren't imaginable in real-time engines. Um, and then, of course, all of our uh, solutions are scan-based. Uh, we um, sort of scrutinize uh, fitting of the meshes to, to eyes um, under e extreme detail, kind of checking reprojections from multiple camera views for every single expression, and then kind of converting that into a biomechanical model that sort of respects the cornea bulge and, uh, um, and you know, sort of uh, calibrates uh, the movement of the flesh in all different directions. Um, having said that, there's certainly still way to go uh, to further improve, but uh, sort of looking um, into sort of what people are doing with sample assets that we have uh, released uh, um, a few weeks ago. Um, I'm, I'm really encouraged by the visuals that I see uh, uh, rendered by individuals, you know, that didn't spend much time doing them. But sort of you can really see that like strong creatives and strong artists are going to be able to produce completely new kind of uh, uh, media now, uh, thanks to this. Jerome, how did you find the eyes and the characters that you were doing when you were doing it uh, remotely? Obviously, you then got the assets. Do they, you know, work for you? Like, do you have to comment on that? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what makes eyes work. <laughs> it's impossible. To, it's impossible. <laughs> I've been trying to figure that out for like 20 years uh, or longer. Um, they're better. I found myself making less comments about eyes, um, like a lot less comments, and more about whether you believe what that person is doing at the time, just in terms of their overall performance. So, you know, we, I mean, there's just been so much done in terms of shading. Um, shading has helped a lot in, in the newer, I think just global illumination in general and ray tracing has helped realize eyes. In the old days, like the Renderman eyes were very difficult to create um, believable eyes, but I think once the, the GI uh, rendering um, technology was more prevalent, um, that's helped, you know, that's been just been better universally. Uh, just, you know, just by going to movies, you see how many digital characters are out there and, you know, you don't really uh, notice the bad eyes anymore. They show up occasionally. I mean, if that's the case, you basically pan the camera off the character or do a camera shake or a lens flare it's right across the face or something to hide it. <laughs> so what I really find fascinating about the eyes is the fact that we hold 90% of our resolution is just about two degrees you know, field of view, and the rest is just a blur. Um, and our mind has a prediction system uh, uh, which understands which is the next target, which is the next blurry target that is relevant to me. Um, what I also find is interesting is that we have very specific patterns at which we sort of, that we run when we look at somebody's face and it's dependent on, on the emotion that that face portrays. So depending on whether we're sad or angry or, you know, just idle, uh, we have a pattern uh, that will basically track various positions in our face. So um, the believability of the eyes is going to be a lot in the animation itself, as well as the scene integration, which is sort of what I found, especially when you have a lot of characters in the scene. Um, I, I think that's, that, that's really often the crucial bit. How do you integrate all of these characters in the scene and where does the eye gaze go? Sorry, just to touch on that as well. I think the eyes are so complex on every level, from the animation to like the the character to the actual geometry. It's such a complex geometry that in order to have shaders that actually work well and represent that, that geometry has to be accurate to real world things. And I think that's what we're getting better at because you can't really use refractive shaders and everything else if that shape of the cornea and the 
you know, the lacrimal fluid and stuff isn't there because it's not going to re react properly. So I think that's something that I think we're getting to the point now where you can see how it's progressing and that we'll get there gradually as, as rendering engines improve, as shaders improve, and as the geometry that we capture is actually more accurate. Yeah, and, and also, uh, I mean, it has, you know, we're talking about the, the shape of the eye itself, but there is, and you're touching upon it a little bit, it's the shape of the eyebrow, the eyelids that form, you know, the shape of your eye and how much tension is in that eyelid. And, you know, if you're doing your saccades, as, as Vlad is mentioning, your, you know, if your eye shifts, the eyelid has to like bulge in the right way. And while it's doing that, you may be squinting. So there's, you know, as you know, there's, you know, we look at eyes all the time. It's the first thing typically a human looks at. And those, you know, thousands of details are just, you know, we're just trying to check those off the list as we progress in the creation of these digital humans. Um, but we're learning more, and what's important though is that you're able to, now you're able to take that knowledge, um, gather data from it, and recreate it. And we're getting better at that. 